today, I'm going to be drawing something very special for a fan. This past weekend, I filmed my Times Draw show in Calgary, and a young fan came up to me who also wanted me to draw Venom and wanted to be an artist. Seeing all of those children there wanting to be aspiring artists, I thought we'd take this opportunity to do something a little special with this video. I did this talk at Centennial College a few years ago. I went over my life story, how I became an artist, and how that led to the YouTube career I have today. And hopefully my career will help inspire you in what kind of art you want to do in your career as well. I went to Sheridan College. I took their art fundamental program. And at that time, it was the mid-90s. At that time, Disney was coming up to Sheridan College and plucking people out of the animation program. So I was trying to get into that program, like everybody else in the country. I didn't get it. I wasn't good enough. So I fell back on illustration. Actually, there were two illustrations. There was one called interpretive and one called technical. The reason I went to technical was because I was about to fail interpretive. That's what happened. My interpretive teacher told me, hey, you're going to fail. But if you go into technical, I'll give you a D. Okay, I'm not a technical, that's what I said. Which is actually good because it taught me how to draw buildings and all that stuff, so that was a good thing. Because my last year of college, I needed uh, a field placement. So I put together, a couple together a portfolio, I went to Fan Expo, Canada, and I started shopping my portfolio around to all these different companies, okay? I went to, I went to Top Cow, they liked my stuff, they gave me a card, said, we'll call you. They never called, that's fine. But there was this one company, it was called Dreamwave. Not Dreamworks, Dreamwave. And what they did, they specialized in comics that looked like Japanese anime. You saw my stuff. That's not, that's not Japanese anime, right? So I didn't think I'd have a shot, but my friend pushed me to go talk to them. So I went to talk to them, and the guy there, his name's Sigmund, a good friend of mine today, he looks through and he's like, oh, this is great, here's a card. So I got the card, and then the next few days, I'm trying to call this number, right? They give me a number. I'm trying to call this number. Nobody's picking up the phone. I try 10 in the morning, 12 in the afternoon, Four o'clock in the afternoon, nobody's picking up the phone. I'm like, did they give me a fake card? That's what I thought. And then I read uh, in a magazine that the owner, uh, he did this interview where he's like, oh, I have uh, three comic book pages to draw today. Good thing I woke up and it was 12 a.m. I'm like, okay, these guys are night owls. So that night, three o'clock in the morning, I called the studio. Somebody picked up. It was his brother, he picked up. He's like, oh, he's calling at three in the morning. And I said, oh, Sigmund, give me the card. Can I come by? And they said, sure, come by tonight. Come at 9. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> right? So I got there at 9 o'clock. So uh, I had a meeting with the owner. His name's Pat. And he looked through my, my stuff. And he wasn't too interested because, again, my stuff's not really Japanese anime. However, I did do two things. I noticed he hired background artists. I did two things. I took two covers th that he did that didn't have a background. And then I drew a background behind it. And he stopped at those two pages and he's like, oh, these are pretty cool. I, I'm kind of liking this. Now, when he saw that, his brother rushes into the room and he goes, hey, Pat, Pat, we got a problem. He's like, what's the problem? He goes, well, we got to get this issue out of Neon Cyber number five. The background artist, he can't come in today. What are we going to do? He looks at me and goes, are you free tonight? That's what happened. That's my, that was my introduction. And I told him about the placement. He said, OK, come on in. Come on in. Don't worry. We'll pay you. I'm going to pay you what you're worth. And uh, he, he, I was his main background artist. I have a question. Sure. Like you did, it sounds like you did some research. Yes. What do you know about the background artist part? One thing that happened when I went to technical illustration, um, before I went into technical illustration, I was really good at drawing humans and horrible backgrounds. When I finished college, I was great at drawing backgrounds, horrible at drawing humans. It was reversed, right? So I knew background was a thing. I was looking through comments, I noticed a lot of artists they have background artists, and, a lot of, and that's how a lot of them broke into the comic book industry at the time. So I just thought, you know, these two don't have a background. I think I could do something really cool. So for the next two years, that's what I did. I drew backgrounds. Now, two years down the line, Pat got the license to do Transformers comics. And then he goes to me, James, I, I know you can't draw humans at all, but I know you could draw cars. You want to take one of the titles. I'll draw the main title. Why don't you draw the other title? And that was my very first fully penciled comic book. Transformers Armada number one, 2002. And that was my first foray into actually fully penciling comic books. At that time, all of us in that studio were your age. We're all between like 20 and 25. So all of us had different priorities. We all got into work at 9 p.m. We worked for three hours, then, worked, then played Counter-Strike till four in the morning, right? So we were always late with our books. We were always like, because we were kids. And that's one thing, I wasn't ready for real responsibility, let's say that. I was living at home with my parents, so I didn't have to pay rent or anything like that. 
I didn't have structure back then. So it was hard for me to keep a regular book. And, and honestly, the next six years, it was hard for me to get regular work. And that's one thing, if anyone here has worked freelance, freelance is extremely volatile. Sometimes you have uh, some work, and then six, of the, six months of the year you don't. And that happened to me. Six months of the year I didn't have work, the next month I had three job offers come at once. I'm like, where were you the other two months? But at the same time, you don't know when to say no because you don't know when the next job is coming. I started working uh, in all the different companies. I, I worked for everybody. I worked for DC, Image Comics, Marvel Comics, Wonder Woman, Incredible Hulk, all these guys, right? And it came to a point where I was working on three books at once. Because again, I didn't know how to say no. I was working on City of Heroes for Top Cow. I was working on Transformers G.I. Joe for Udon. And I was working on this uh, thing for Spin Master. All at once, pretty much. I was home, but I wasn't home. I was locked up in the room upstairs. That's, that's that, 24 hours a day. That's where I was, planted, because I had to be. And uh, that's when I decided, okay, okay, I had a lot of fun doing this comics thing. Maybe it wasn't for me. And that's when I realized sometimes your childhood dream doesn't really turn into your dream. It turned into something else. I really like comics, but it wasn't for me. So that's when I decided to leave. I went back to school. I went to uh, Sheridan College again. I took, this time I took computer animation. I took the one year course and this got me a job at MGM. So I packed up, moved to Vancouver and uh, we worked on a show called Stargate. Have you heard of Stargate? Stargate Atlantis, that was it. We had a little small shack in the back of, uh, in back, in the, back of, the, um, of the set. This is why this is important, okay? This is an important part in history because I was doing some cloth simulation. There's a lot of waiting time, okay? I got a buddy, he, he read a lot. We had three lots. But me, what I did, I started drawing. I started drawing. This is what I drew while I was waiting for the cash. So these are all the characters in Stargate. I, little did I know that me doing all these little things was actually leading me to where I am today. Okay, but we'll get to that in a second. So I drew this. And my supervisor liked it a lot, and actually a lot of the producers liked it. At the end of the year, we had a crew party where all the actors, everyone who worked on set, we had this little party. And I was the nerd going around in the party, excuse me, can you sign my, can you sign my drawing, please, sir? I love your work, sir, can you sign my drawing? But I really enjoyed doing this, and that's important. I really enjoyed doing this, okay? And one really big setback for me it was, um, I worked at a company called NPC. I worked on a movie called Percy Jackson. You've heard of Percy Jackson? Uh, my supervisor didn't like me. Nothing to do with me, it had everything to do with my work. And I'm mad enough to admit that right now. I sucked back, back then, okay? He gave, me, he gave me a project to do. It would take me twice as long as everyone else. Wasn't of the quality. And it was really a bad experience, to be honest with you. But not just because that he was disappointed, it was because I was disappointed myself. It came to a point where I, um, I asked them, are you gonna keep me on? And they told me at first, yes. Yes, we're gonna keep you on. We had a room, and we called it uh, the happy room. We called it the happy room because everybody goes into that room, they go into that room, they come out with an extension and a raise. Happened to my two buddies, they went in theirs, right? And then team came time for me. It's time to go in the happy room. All right, James, you're high-fiving me. <laughs> the happy room, all right. We go in there, and they go, okay, James, your contract ends in two weeks. Thanks for helping us. That's what they said. They told me two weeks before they were gonna keep me on. I just renewed the lease to my apartment in, in Vancouver. But uh, you know, we talked about it and uh, yeah, it, was, it wasn't a great time, let's just say that. So I decided to take a year off and then we decided to move back to Toronto. I got back here, got a job at a company called Spin downtown here, some of you heard of that. I've worked on a couple movies there. And then I had a cup of coffee at Ubisoft. Ubisoft. When I was at Ubisoft, unfortunately, we had an accident in our family. We'll go into specifics, but something happened where I actually had to leave my job. So I was off for a while, and I thought to myself, what am I going to do? I did a little bit of comic books here and there. But then I started watching and clicking around this thing called YouTube. This was in 2013. I was looking around YouTube, and I saw these little tutorials. Uh, one guy, his name's Mark Crilly, he would do all these little tutorials about an eye. Do an eye, got 20 million views, I'm just drawing an eye. So I thought to myself, okay, what if I did a YouTube channel? Wouldn't that be fun? Now, I didn't want to go on necessarily as an artist because I was listening to a lot of podcasts. I like movie reviews. I like guys like Jeremy Johns. So I actually wanted to be a movie reviewer. I wanted to go into YouTube being a movie reviewer. So, but instead of just re uh, reviewing the movie, I would actually draw while reviewing the movie. And that's where the name came from. 
box office artist from the box office and I'm the artist. See, I'm not, I, would, I never was saying my, art, my artist box office, no. It was more because I was trying to get into the movies and that's where that name came from and it's stuck. I would overlay images uh, from the movies and give my analysis and all that stuff. So all the while drawing an image about the movie. And that's where that whole Stargate thing came into. I liked doing that so much. I thought to myself, why don't I do that on camera? So there it is, my recreation of Amazing Spider-Man number 316. This was a lot of fun to do. So this is the first time I share something like this with you guys on my channel. But also, my career just doesn't stop right here. And hopefully you guys will head over to part two when it comes out. There's a whole lot more I need to get into after I started YouTube. Because it's a long journey and you find out a lot about yourself as you go through this journey. But what are your challenges? What are you facing as an artist? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll try to answer as many comments as I can. Thank you guys for watching. Please do subscribe and I'll see you next time.